Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on comparing populations. As we look into our real world link, Mr. Singh surveyed the students in his first period gym class to find how many times they exercised this month. The box plot, also known as a box and whisker plot, below shows the results. So how many times have you exercised this month? We have a number down here at 0, 30, and we need to find the following values. The minimum, the first quartile, third quartile, maximum, range, interquartile range. So the minimum is the least value, the smallest value in the data set, and that's down here at 0. The maximum is the greatest value in a data set. Well, that's the largest up there at 30. The range is the difference between the greatest value and the least value. So the range is 30 minus 0, which is, well, 30. For the first and third quartile, it's, for the first quartile, the median of the lower half of the data and the third quartile is the median of the upper half of the data. And on a box plot, that's represented here at the ends of our boxes. So the first quartile is down here at 5, and the third quartile is up here at 20. For interquartile range, it's the distance between the first and third quartiles. So it's 20 minus 5, which is 15. What is the median? Well, the median is represented on the box plot here, which is 10. What this represents is the fact that half of the students exercised fewer than 10 times during the month, and on the flip side, and half of the students exercised more than 10 times. When it comes to writing conclusions, there are a lot of different conclusions we could draw, such as every portion of this contains 25% of the data, meaning 25% of the students were between 0 and 5, 25% of the students were between 5 and 10, 25% of the students were between 10 and 20, and the other 25% were between 20 and 20. 30. It's broken down into quarters or quartiles. So a conclusion that we could draw here, 25% of the students exercised between, and at this point you could pick. You could pick between 0 and 5 times, between 5 and 10 times, between 10 and 20 times, or again between 20 and 30 times, and for this we'll just say between 5 and 10 times. But again, you could pick any of those little quartile ranges. So now as we look to compare two populations, a double box plot consists of two box plots graphed on the same number line. A double dot plot consists of two dot plots that are drawn on the same number line. You can draw inferences about two populations in a double box plot or double dot plot by comparing their centers and variations. The centers and variations to use are shown, and this table is really important in our lesson. If both data sets are symmetric, well, what's symmetric mean? Well, look over here at the box plot. 
A box plot is symmetric if the data are balanced at the center. Notice how we have some balance here. This is equal to this, and this is equal to that. Non-symmetric, notice how it's not balanced at the center. So if both sets are symmetric, meaning they look like this perhaps, we're going to use the mean and what's called the mean absolute deviation to calculate our center and variation. If neither data set is symmetric, we're going to use the median and interquartile range. And if only one is symmetric, we're going to also use the median and interquartile range. The only time we're going to use the mean and mean absolute deviation for this is if both are symmetric. So in our guided example, Casey surveyed a different group of students in her science and math classes. The double box plot shows the results for both classes. Compare their centers and variations. Write an inference that you can draw about the two populations. You can notice here how many times have you posted a blog this month. Is the question being asked? The results of the math class and science class are shown. And so one of the first things you need to look for is symmetry. Neither box plot is symmetric, which means we're going to use the interquartile range and median. The median to compare the two centers and the interquartile range to compare the variations. So the median for the math class was 10. The median for the science class was 20. The interquartile range for the math class, we're going to take the 20 minus 5 to get 15. For the science class, 25 minus 15 to get 10. And here are the conclusions we could draw. Overall, the science students posted more blogs than the math students. You can use that. The median for the science class is twice the median for the math class. Now, when we talk about variation, what we're talking about is the spread of the data. How far apart are the data points? There is a greater spread of data around the median for the math class than the science class. You can see how the box here is bigger. You can notice how 15 is bigger than 10. Since this is a bigger number, the data is more spread out for the math class than for the science class. And so now we get to try this on our own in our got it question. The double dot plot shows the cost of MP3 players at two different stores. Compare the centers and variations of the two populations. Write an inference so you can draw about the two populations. Well, one of the first things we need to ask is, is this plot symmetric? Well, this side is shorter than this side, so it's not symmetric for electronics world. For bargain basement, this does look bigger than this, and this is definitely smaller than that. So, again, that's not symmetric. And again, if neither set is symmetric, we're going to use the median and the interquartile range, which I'll abbreviate as IQR, to compare the centers and variations. Let's look then. Let's make a table like we did in the previous example. We have median and interquartile range, one for electronics world, one for bargain basement. Our median for electronics world is right here. And if we look at our number line, that's going to be 70. Our median for bargain basement is at 60. To calculate our interquartile range for electronics world, we look to be at 75 and 65. So 75 minus 65 gets us an interquartile range of 10. For bargain basement, this is the difference between 65 and 55. So 65 minus 55 is also 10. For our first statement, let's write something about the median prices as we write inferences. 
we can start off by saying the median price at Electronics World is ten dollars more since 70 minus 60 is 10 than at Bargain Basement. So that compares the medians. What about the interquartile range? Well, both are 10. So we can state that. The interquartile range is the same for both stores. Then to draw our final conclusion, we can use the medians and just kind of looking at the plots. We can notice that 75% of the scores, since there's one, two, three parts here, 75% of the dollars or the costs or prices are greater than $65, where that's only 25% at bargain basement are greater than $65. So our final conclusion can be generally, meaning in general, so generally, MP3 players are, I'll scroll up a little here, more expensive at Electronics World. So we compared the centers using the median. We calculated the variation, the spread of the data using the interquartile range. And then we drew a conclusion about which was more expensive. Now, as we look into guided example two, The double dot plot below shows the daily high temperatures for two cities for 13 days. Compare the centers and variations of the two populations. Write an inference you can draw about the two populations. Well, in this example, both dot plots are symmetric. We're going to use the mean to compare the centers and the mean absolute deviation rounded to the nearest tenth to compare the variations. And so you can see in the table here where we have the mean, 81 and 84 for Springfield and Lake City, and mean absolute deviation of 1 and 4 tenths for each. Now, in our little post-it note box here, to find the mean absolute deviation, find the absolute values of the differences between each value and the mean. Then find the average of those differences. That sounds confusing. It's actually just more work than it is confusing. If you look, for example, at Springfield, our data values were 78, 79, 80, 81 three times, then 82 twice, 83 twice, and then 84 once. When you go to calculate mean absolute deviation, what you're going to do is find the difference between the mean you calculated and those data values. You want to find out how far each point is away from the mean. So you would take and subtract the 81 from all of these points, since 81 was our mean. And again, you can see where this is going to be more tedious work than anything. But it says the absolute values of the differences because we do not want to be dealing with negatives here. So you would find the absolute values of all of these. And that's what the bars here represent. Are those absolute values. And then as you go to solve these, this data point is 3 away, 2 away, 
two, one, one, then a whole bunch of zeros, one, one, two, two, and three. And what you're going to do then is add those up. So three plus two plus two and so on. And when you add those up, your sum is 18. And then you're going to divide that by how many points there are, which was 13. And when you do that and round to the nearest tenth, you get the 1 and 4 tenths. So when you're calculating the mean absolute deviation, you calculate the mean to compare the centers. And then for mean absolute deviation, you look very detailed at how far each point is away from the mean and calculate the mean of that, calculate the average of that, and round to the nearest tenth. Now, to draw our conclusion, while both cities have the same variation of one and four tenths, and if we were to calculate Lake City, we would also get that, Lake City has a greater mean temperature than Springfield. It's three degrees warmer. One of the reasons why I wanted to show you how to calculate interquartile range in that previous example was because our got it question B here does not deal with symmetry. The double dot plot shows the number of new emails in each of Pedro's and Annika's inboxes for 16 days. Compare the centers and variations of the two populations. Write an inference you can draw about the two populations. Well, again, as you look here, they're not symmetric. So what we're going to use is the median and the interquartile range to compare. And we're going to do that for Pedro and for Annika. Now, one way to calculate the median is to count how many points you have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And also said 16 days in a question, but it's good to double check. The median is going to be the 16 plus 1 divided by 2 point. So the 17 divided by 2 point, which is 8.5. That tells me the median is going to be in between the 8th and the 9th term. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 means our median is between 35 and 36, which is, well, 35 and 5 tenths. And I'm just going to draw in a little dot here, kind of to indicate it's not a new point, but it's just to show us, okay, our median was here. And for Annika, it's going to be the same type of thing. We're going to count to see in between the 8th and the ninth point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So in between the 8th and the ninth point is right here. And for her, that's just going to be 32. Now why it's important to break our data in half is when we go to look for interquartile ranges, we need to calculate those medians for the lower and upper half. And so our lower half is here for Pedro. And so there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points there. And if you take just a simple 8 plus 1 and divide by 2, that's 4 and a half, which tells you it's in between the 4th and the 5th terms. 1, 2, 3, 4. And in between 4 and 5 is going to be there, which if we look is a inter or a first quartile here of 34. And for our third quartile, it's again going to be in between the fourth and the fifth terms. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, well, the fifth term is here. So it's going to be in between 36 and 37, which is 36 and 5 tenths. So our interquartile range is going to be 36 and 5 tenths minus 34, which is 2 and 5 tenths. For Annika, 
again, is going to be between the fourth and the fifth terms of the lower or upper half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be right here, which is 31 for the lower. And for the upper, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's the fifth, so it's in between 33 and 35, which is 34. And 34 minus 31 is 3. So we have our medians, and we have our interquartile ranges. One other strategy, if you struggle to count on the dot plot, is to list these numbers out. Just take your numbers and go, all right, for Annika, I had 30, 30, 30, and list those numbers out if you're struggling to visualize how this is all breaking down on the dot plot. Now, for our conclusion, we can say there is a greater spread of new emails for Annika, comma, but Pedro's center, which is his median, is larger. So who are we going to expect to get more emails? Well, Pedro. So you would expect more email for Pedro. Now as we look at guided example three, the double dot plot, excuse me, double box plot, shows the daily participants for two zip line companies for one month. Compare the centers and variations of the two populations. Which company has the greater number of daily participants? Now, we do have a star here, which is an addition, which means that's an outlier. Now, as we look, the distribution for Zip Adventures is symmetric, true, while the distribution for Treetop Tours is not. That's also true. Use the median and interquartile range to compare the populations. Again, if it's going to be one is symmetric or neither is symmetric, we use the interquartile range and median. Only if both are symmetric do we use mean and interquartile range. So you can see the median for treetop tours is 70, zip is 50, interquartile range for treetop is 30, while zip is 20. And their conclusion overall, treetop tours has a greater number of daily participants. However, treetop tours also has a greater variation, so it is more difficult to predict how many participants they may have each day. So they have more, but you can see their range is also larger. And so from day to day, it's more difficult to predict. Zip Adventures does have greater consistency in their distribution. And as we look now at guided example four, the double dot plot shows, whoa, that was weird. Well, we'll just continue on. Wow, what is going on here? Technical difficulties, love them. The double dot plot shows Jada and Angel's number of hours worked in a week at their part-time jobs. Compare the centers and variations of the two populations. Who typically works the greater number of hours in a week? Well, Jada is nice and symmetric. You can see one, two, four, two, one, nice and symmetric, whereas Angel's is not. Use the median interquartile range here, and you can see the medians are the same at 8, and the interquartile ranges are both the same at 2. So, the median interquartile range is the same. However, the interquartile range for Angel's number of hours worked is the difference of 10 and 8, while the interquartile range for Jada's is 9 and 7. So, it's the same range, but 10 minus 8 versus 9 minus 7, we're going to go with the 10 minus 8 being greater, being larger. Um, so Angel typically works more hours per week. And now for our last got it question. The double dot plot shows Kareem and Martin's race times for a three mile race. Compare the centers and variations of the two populations. Which runner is more likely to run a faster race? And so we can see where Kareem's here is nice and symmetric, two, three, four, three, two. Whereas Martin's is kind of all over the place, so it's not symmetric. 
And so what we're going to use to calculate this now is the median and the interquartile range one more time. So we'll go median, IQR, and we are doing this for both Kareem and Martin. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video a strategy to pull out the numbers, and that might be best here, just to show you. Kareem, 16, 16, 17, 17, 17. We've got the four 18s. We've got the three 19s and the two 20s. Now, to get this median, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 data points. So if we take 14 plus 1 and divide by 2, we get 7 and a half, which means it's going to be between the 7th and 8th terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 means our median is going to be between the 7th and 8th terms. And even if you were to count and cross off, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers on the left side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers on the right side. So our median is 18. When we look for the interquartile range for Kareem, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers here. And if you were to take 7 plus 1 and divide by 2, you'd get 8 divided by 2, which is 4, which tells you it's the fourth term. So the fourth terms there are 19 and 17. So 19 minus 17 is going to get us an interquartile range of 2. Now, let's finish up with Martin. And again, I think it is going to be useful to write these out. Martin, we had 14, 3 15s, 2 16s, a trio of 17s, 18, 19. These guys are really fast, by the way. 21 and 23s. Now, it is important to note here that there are a different number of races. Kareem only ran the 14 races. Martin, if you read it, are 15 races. So to find that median, we can take 15 plus 1, divide by 2, and get 8. That means the eighth term is the median. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means our median is 17. And then for our interquartile ranges, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers here. 7 plus 1 divided by 2 again is going to be 4, so it's our fourth terms are going to be our um, quartiles. So that's going to be 19 minus 15, which is 4. Now, to draw our conclusions. Our median for Martin is 17 compared to the 18 for Kareem. So we can say typically Martin runs a faster race. But his interquartile range of four is kind of scary because it means he's really inconsistent. He has a lot of variation. So we do need to make a note of that. We do need to say uh, Martin's times are not as consistent as Kareem's. And that is it for this lesson on compare populations. Good luck.